Skater 1, 2, and 2, and, um, I'm not dead. Ah, yes, I'm not dead, um... <laughs> I think it's discussion day, I guess, technically speaking. Ah, yes, discussion day, and today we're gonna be talking about my my brush with COVID-19. I need one of these. Whoa! Oh, I still can't taste anything. It tastes like a Bud Light. Yeah, so I figured what I would do was my first video back, uh, now that I'm on the decided back end of this whole thing, I would uh, be able to talk to you guys about it and give you a first-hand account of the whole thing because I feel like there's tons of misinformation and at least my first-hand account could be educational to you guys, hopefully at least, from a, you know, a person you can trust because I have no stake in this whatsoever. <laughs> For those of you who do not know, I currently live in New York City, specifically Queens, but the city is considered the whole thing. Not Manhattan, though. I work out on Long Island as an architectural drafter for a construction subcontracting company. Due to some, what I'm assuming are political reasons, construction was considered an essential business, so despite the fact that I can't figure out as to why, I was reporting to work every day. Meaning that I had a decent likelihood of being exposed to the virus. Whether I got it at work or at the gas station in between, who knows? I was being very careful at work, we wore gloves and masks, and I did the so the same thing at the gas station. And I really wasn't making any other stops other than that. I was pretty much living in my apartment when I wasn't at work. But even still, totes got it. Uh, and that is official, I was tested, did the nasal swab, uh, that's an unfun test. I mean, when they when they when they get in there, they really get in there. It's like scratching the back of your brain. I told the nurse it would have been nice to at least get dinner first. But yeah, no one can say for sure where I would have gotten it from. But uh, I'm going outside at all, so there's always that. I'm also in New York, so that's kind of a hotbed for the whole thing because it's a large, busy compact metropolitan area and also there's a lot of international travel here so if you told me this new york was like the first place to touch down in the united states would it be surprised <laughs> but i'm uh, i'm clearly okay now so first let's do a timeline It was uh, about two weeks ago, uh, the end of the work week, I was sitting at my desk and I started feeling a little funny. Uh, I could feel that weird burning sensation you get in like the back of your palate, like when you're starting to come down with a cold. So I was like, okay, I must have a cold. And then that's pretty much the extent of it until that weekend where I noticed that I could not taste a damn thing. And when I say I couldn't taste, I mean to like a comical, like a comical level. Like I would have a beer or a glass of wine, it tasted like water. And it's, it still kind of does. Oh, it's weird. And that was like two weeks ago. And then I noticed that as the days continued, I started feeling as if someone was like pressing upon my chest. I kept taking my temperature. I never had a fever. So I was like, oh, I must not have it because I don't have a fever. <laughs> but it was that Monday, it was in the morning, and I went to my boss and I'm like, you know what? I don't feel so good. I think I'm gonna go get tested. And he's like, please do, because we all don't want to die. I went in, got that thing shoved up my nose, and they're like, you know what? You can't come back to work till you get cleared. So I was like, you know what? I'm not gonna argue with you there. And when I said I wasn't feeling good, I mean, I had a bad headache, um, a lot of sinus pressure in, the, in my right head quadrant. I felt so much like that my eye was gonna force its way out of the socket. It was the most impressive sinus headache I've ever had. Which is, you know, and the doctor was like, hey, you could just have a sinus infection. Here's a Z-pack of antibiotics just in case, which I proceeded to take. But went home, uh, installed some of my work programs on my, on my machine at home here where I make all my videos because it can run those things because it's luckily a powerful computer. Nice. Video rendering is resource intensive. And I wasn't really that sick. Like, I had a f no fever, slight, you know, chest congestion, and I couldn't taste anything. And I felt a little funny. That was about it. So I figured, hey, I'll work from home so I don't have to blow sick days. And that's pretty much how it proceeded. I got my test back uh, via my app thing, and it told me 100%, yes, you have COVID-19. Congratulations, you got the meme disease. Uh, I noticed I was rather tired all the time. Uh, I took a bunch of naps, uh, but I was still able to work. Uh, it was kind of cool not having to commute to work anymore. That was fun. I will say this though, um, I've never had such easy commutes while I was going to work. I work like 30 miles from where I live, which doesn't sound like that far, but when it's New York and Long Island, the traffic is 
unreal. And the fact that I was able to get to work in like 35, 40 minutes was in freaking sane. That's the shortest commute I've ever had. I would be lucky if I got home on like a Thursday or Friday night before like 6.30 getting out at 5. So you have no idea how nice it's been that all you non-essentials have been not going to work. I'm getting distracted. But yeah, so I continue to work from home for a couple of weeks. Uh, I'm still doing that because uh, I need to get cleared to go back to work and that has been a bit of an uphill battle, but that's not what we're gonna talk about. But yeah, uh, I really never got that particularly sick. However, I was probably one of the best case scenarios for the whole thing. Up until all the gyms closed, Jason and I were going to the gym three, four times a week. I was in the best shape of my life. <laughs> I've been eating a lot healthier with like my little prepared meal things. And at night it's all like protein shakes and, and, and well-balanced things. Like I've legitimately never been this healthy in, in the 30 years of my life. And I'm also only 30 years old, so I'm, I'm not a boomer. Granted, uh, I was two months premature, almost died as a baby, and my lungs were underdeveloped. So uh, I wasn't 100% perfect case. Uh, I do tend to have respiratory issues whenever I get sick, regardless of what it is, which was a little nerve wracking when I got that uh, diagnosis back. However, uh, I tanked it like a champ. Hell, I still live streamed during it. Everyone made fun of me for being on my deathbed, despite the fact that I was able to live stream during it. And like I said, I was continuing to work from home. The worst I got was probably about halfway through, uh, where the chest congestion got so bad, I would equate it to the feeling like if, let's say your lungs are a balloon, you replace that balloon with one of those foam gator balls from gym class. Yeah, I can still breathe, but it's like... It was weird. If I had to equate it to a feeling that you guys might be able to understand, have you ever been like wearing a sweater and you like scuffed your socks and you're just like covered in static electricity and you can like kind of like feel it as you breathe? It's hard to... It was like that, just constant. And like I said, I could not taste a damn thing. Thing. Still can't. According to the doctor, uh, even though that it's been over 10 days and I'm probably no longer contagious, uh, I'm also probably no longer even technically sick, I will still have some continued reduced lung function due to inflammation and the taste thing in my palate will just take, takes forever to come back apparently. Which is why this IPA tastes like a Bud Light. It's better than water like it was before, but oh, that is unpleasant. And I like IPAs. <laughs> it doesn't taste like a damn thing. Ah! But yeah, so that was my experience with the whole thing. Um, I hope it's educational. Uh, I would not say that it was the worst thing I've ever had, because I've had some particularly weird sicknesses. Hell, just the beginning of the, of the year I had the flu, and that was far worse. At least we think it was the flu. There is always a chance that I actually- come on. There is always a chance that what I had was actually COVID-19, and I was reinfected and my immune response was very strong because I had it previously and that's why this time I wasn't very sick. There's always that chance. It was before uh, they acknowledged any American cases, so it could have been the flu and the symptoms were different. It was much more headache and fever and that was like pretty much it, so that was probably the flu. But yeah, I've had like hand, foot, mouth. That was far worse. <sighs> oh God, was that worse. Covered in sores. My nose was closed by pus. Here's that mental image for you. My hands and feet felt like they were constantly asleep. That like tingly white noise feeling. Non-stop for days. Could barely sleep. It was so distracting. It hurt to walk on a carpet. That was, that was, that was, that was worse. But yeah, so um, I hope that was educational. You know, thanks for watching the vid. Uh, we are going to be getting back into the, which would be the last of my, uh, Master Rule 5 revisits for my lists in which we're going to be doing the worst Link Monsters. That should be coming out actually pretty quick because I think I'm going to just record both of these in one go. Oof. Thank you guys for being patient and remember guys, if you don't troll the meta, uh, who will? Because I might die next time. Remember to subscribe so that you don't miss any of my totally rad dueling. Watching more of these videos is almost as fine as Taya's ass? What? I'm not saying that. Fine. Then it's time to duel!